there. So let's start with Professor Kaku. Professor Kaku, you've been a leading forecaster of technology for most of your career. What do you think about the digital revolution that we've seen so far? Where is it going and how might it interact with other forms of technological revolution in science such as biotechnology? Well, in the coming years, computer chips will cost as little as a penny. That's cheaper than garbage, cheaper than scrap paper. So computer chips will be everywhere and nowhere, including our contact lenses. So when we put on our contact lenses and blink, we will go online. And who were the first people to buy internet contact lenses? <laughs> College students taking final examinations. <laughs> this means that my students will blink and they will not have to memorize all the things I've been talking about. This is going to revolutionize education because we cannot force students to memorize things that they can simply blink and get. And then if you feel sick, you will blink and see RoboDoc. RoboDoc is artificially intelligent, talks to you in plain English or Russian or whatever, speaks any language, accesses the entire internet for sound <coughs> medical advice, almost for free. This is going to revolutionize the medical establishment. We'll still have doctors, but doctors will use RoboDoc as an aid. And if you're in a car accident in a foreign country, you don't speak the language, you'll talk to your wristwatch and talk to RoboLawyer. RoboLawyer understands the law in any country, in any language. In fact, I personally believe that artificial intelligence, the robotics industry, will eventually become bigger than the automobile industry of today because your automobile will become a robot. You will talk to it. You will argue with it. You'll have discussions with your car about the best uh, route to take. And when you want to park the car, you simply tell your car, park yourself. And the car parks itself. This is going to revolutionize urban economics when you don't have to worry about parking anymore. And then the next organ to be digitized is the brain. You may not know this, but two years ago, scientists were able to upload the first memories. Memories can now be uploaded and downloaded. This makes possible BrainNet. <laughs> BrainNet could be the next step in the evolution of the Internet. Instead of zeros and ones, zeros and ones, instead of text, you will put emotions, feelings, sensations, memories. Teenagers will go crazy. Teenagers put happy faces at the end of every sentence. Why bother to do that when you can put the emotion of your first dance, your first kiss, your first whatever, right there on the internet. And so in the future, when you walk into a room, you will mentally command the internet, you'll take dictation mentally, you'll turn things on, turn things off, communicate with other people. People will think of you as a wizard of some sort, mentally communicating with everything around you. That's BrainNet. And then biotech is being digitized now. We can create a human body shop. We can create from your own cells, so there's no rejection mechanism. We can create skin, bone, cartilage, noses, ears, blood vessels, heart valves, bladders, complete windpipes can be grown in the laboratory. The next organ to be grown, by the way, is the liver. So for all you alcoholics in the audience, <laughs> take heart. We may be able to grow your next liver. So even the economy is now being digitized into something I call perfect capitalism. You see, capitalism is based on supply and demand. But you don't know who's cheating you when you buy something. You don't know what the profit margin is. In the future, your contact lens will scan everything in a store, tell you who's cheating you, tell you who has the best product, what is the profit margin on every single thing that you can scan with your, with your contact lens. And so capitalism becomes perfect. Perfect supply and demand. This means that there are winners and losers. The losers will be middlemen. Because why did Amazon become so big? Why did Airbnb? Why did Uber become so quickly so large? Because they digitized the middlemen. 
So I tell my friends, if you want to become a billionaire, if you want to become a billionaire, take an industry, take any industry, write down all the places where there's friction, where there is middlemen, where there's obstruction, where there's frustration, list all the places in any industry, digitize it, and you too could become another Amazon founder. Thank you, Professor. In good futurism, that is a future with both inspires and terrifies. So thank you.